They said that the third floor is going to be above 90 degrees in the afternoon, so it'd be just too hot. Several days of potentially record-breaking heat in our forecast, and students in dozens of DPS classrooms are being told to take the afternoon off this week. We already knew this Lincoln County Sheriff's deputy was a hero, but today we're getting the first-hand look at the wrong way crash on I-70, the view from his body cam, and hearing what was going through his head as he tried to save the other driver. The first Omicron boosters are officially going into arms across Colorado today, and the CDC has updated guidance on who should get the shots and how long you might wait to need to get one. Let's state the obvious. It's hot, really, really hot, and we are still well into the 90s across much of the front range and eastern plains. 98 degrees the high today. New record for Denver, the 12th record high this year. Rec centers and libraries will be opening as cooling centers today and tomorrow with more record temps in the forecast. As the temperature climbs, hundreds of Denver Public School students will go home early. The district has implemented moved up release times for 28 schools for tomorrow and four schools will close entirely. Yeah, it's just too hot inside many of the classrooms that don't have air conditioning. But Nine News reporter Cole Sullivan shows us that some schools didn't get AC installed this summer, even though they were supposed to. As students pour out of McAuliffe International, it's as hot outside as it is in the classroom. I had sweat all like everywhere. It was just, mm -mm. and they, they have two big fans in the hallway. We're on the third floor, so it's definitely going to be really hot up there. Administrators warn the top floor could climb above 90 degrees, making it tough for kids to concentrate. Sitting in one place sweating is not great for learning, no. Denver Public Schools was supposed to install air conditioning here and at nine other campuses over the summer. But the district's facilities manager says global supply chain disruptions interfered. There were a number of schools that we were unable to get online prior to school start. Trina Marcel says instead the district deploys portable AC units and opens windows. So we're just trying to cool them uh, as much as possible. But that doesn't always work. I mean, in the classrooms, it's really hot. It's like hot where the point is like you like can't really breathe in there. Like it's just really hot. When it gets above 86 degrees inside, the district considers sending students home early, which comes with its own problems for parent pickup. So it's very frustrating. I can't imagine what parents who don't have flexibility in their schedules do. Stephanie Bates could pick up her daughter early today, but there's only so much Daphne can do to prepare for the heat when she's back tomorrow. I'll bring a water bottle tomorrow, and that's all I can think of that I can do, but. About a quarter of the 208 schools in the DPS system do not have AC. There are plans and money to install air conditioning in 18 schools over the next two years. That would not only keep students cool, but also keep them in class on a week like this when we're seeing so many sent home early, Tom. Yeah, pretty uncomfortable for all of us, but especially you think of those kids in those classrooms. That is tough stuff. All right, Cole, thanks. It's not just the heat. Wildfire smoke is also sticking around over Colorado this week. It's been a little bit harder to see the mountains from the metro area today and forecasting from the National Weather Service says it's only going to get worse tomorrow. The smoke is rolling in from Idaho, Oregon and Northern California, and it will be the most dense tomorrow before it then is forecast to roll back out with a cold front later this week. Lightweight, baby. Ain't none to it. Crash, 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 Romy Medical, I'm hit. Fight it, Hutton, fight it. There's newly released body camera footage of Lincoln County Deputy Michael Hutton stopping a wrong way driver on I-70 Sunday night. CSP says the driver, a 58-year-old woman, was suffering some kind of a medical episode. Hutton administered medical aid to the driver until backup arrived. This was after he moved his SUV in front of her car to stop it with a head-on collision. Neither were seriously injured, and Hutton is set to return to work tomorrow. This is not the first time that Hutton, Deputy Hutton has been in a dangerous situation. Last year, he was shot three times when he was ambushed, responding to a theft in progress. It was months before he was able to return to work. An ice cream truck driver in Wheat Ridge who was forced into the back of his truck at gunpoint may have been let go because he had a son. Court documents say that Daniel Davidson pulled a gun on an ice cream truck driver while the driver was on his break a month ago. Davidson telling the victim to get back into his truck that was parked at the King Supers near 38th and Sheridan. 
The suspect then told the driver to hand over his keys and his phone. Well, after the victim told Davidson that he had a child, Davidson told him to get out if he ever wanted to see the child again. The victim got out of the truck. Davidson then drove away. Police found the ice cream truck in Denver later that night. Davidson had been arrested in Denver on something related to a different incident. Wheat Ridge police charged with robbery and kidnapping, among other charges. If someone is convicted of a crime as a kid, oftentimes those records are sealed to give the offender a second chance as an adult. But one Denver attorney says there's a double standard when it comes to so-called habitual offender law. Nine News reporter Noel Brennan shows us this defense attorney wants the Colorado Supreme Court to hear his argument of why that is unfair. This issue is being challenged in a lot of different places in the country. In this case, an attorney does not argue his client is innocent. It's an attempted murder was his last charge. Instead, Jason Flores Williams wants the Colorado Supreme Court to reconsider how his client was sentenced. The court, when it sentenced him to 96 years in prison, it utilized or used as a basis for that crimes that occurred when he was a juvenile. Larry Gomez is 43 now, but when he was 16, he committed two felonies. At the age of 16, there was a robbery and a burglary. That's it. Then came a drug charge as an adult. He was found with uh, 1.1 grams of cocaine. When Gomez was sentenced for attempted murder in 2013, those previous convictions came back to haunt him multiplying his sentence under Colorado's habitual offender law. So if the United States Supreme Court is saying, hey, you know, you, we cannot be giving life sentences for, for juveniles because we acknowledge the juveniles have a different mind, different capacities, don't understand their consequences, then how is it that we can be using juvenile adjudications, right, as the basis to give somebody life sentences? Flores Williams filed a petition asking the state's highest court to weigh in. This issue has not been addressed by lawmakers. And that may be the problem for Gomez and his attorney, because it may be that the Supreme Court and the Court of Appeals also are letting the legislature decide whether to change the Habitual Offender Act to exclude juvenile convictions. Nine News legal analyst Scott Robinson says the Colorado Supreme Court accepts fewer than 5% of cases. Flores Williams hopes his will be considered. Noel Brennan, Nine News. Flores Williams filed his petition yesterday. There's no telling when or if the Colorado Supreme Court will take up the case. Oh, that's the sounds of a bugling elk, which means the elk rut is underway. At Rocky Mountain National Park, that means several areas are closed through October, so the elk can go through their mating rituals in private, if you will. No adults, no, no people. The restrictions apply to Horseshoe Park, Upper Beaver Meadows, Moraine Park, Harbison Meadow, and Holsworth Meadow. If you don't, you can't be able to hike in those areas, by the way, or ride horses off the roads and trains between 5 p.m. and 10 a.m. during the rut. And those elk sounds also mean that the road up to the Mount Evans Summit is also closed for the season. The Mount Evans Scenic Byway now closed from the Summit Lake Park all the way up to the summit. You can still make reservations to drive up to the Mount Goliath Nature Center and the Summit Lake Park until around October 2nd. You can still hike or ride a bike up to the summit. Updated booster shots are in Colorado, but the CDC says not everyone should rush to get one. An e-cigarette company has agreed to pay nearly $440 million after the court said their marketing campaigns were responsible for a vaping epidemic. 